As someone who uses Fresco for nearly everything, one of my favorite features is how easy it is to add motion to your illustration work. Even with the announcement of Procreate Dreams, I'm still really excited about Fresco and really don't think that Dreams is going to encroach too much into this. Procreate Dreams looks like an amazing animation software that you could do all kinds of things that you know you probably couldn't do in Fresco in terms of like full on animation. But to be honest, the things that I like to use animation for is to sort of bring my otherwise static illustrations to life with a little bit of movement. And Fresco makes that kind of thing so easy. With just a few clicks, you can have something moving without thinking about it as a full-on animation project. And I think that's amazing. So in this video, I'm gonna show you five different ways that you can easily add motion to your illustration work. So let's get into it. All right, to get started, I'm gonna show you just how quickly I can add some little Firefly friends for this cranky owl that maybe you recognize from my last live stream. Did you know I do live streams every Friday? You should uh, come hang out. All right, so I'm gonna make a new layer and I'm gonna draw a firefly. So I'm gonna select the yellow from the eyes because it's perfect firefly color. And I'm gonna grab the classic anchor and I'm just gonna make a little yellow dot because that's what a firefly looks like in the dark. So let's animate this. I'm gonna click on the animation at the bottom right. And what we'll do here is just click on the path option in the bottom center. And I'm gonna draw a flight path for this firefly to just fly all around the scene. And then he can just leave the scene. And you're like, oh, that's interesting. It's flying around that path. Doesn't really look like how a firefly would fly. Just looks a little chaotic. Give me a minute, okay? We got options here. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some multiples. And you may think, oh, that doesn't really help either. What if we added a ton? Now it looks like a Christmas light. You could do a Christmas light this way, but I don't want to. We could have so many. Let's bring this down and let's scatter these so that they're not all in a line, looking a little bit more random and firefly-like. The next issue is they're going way too fast. So we can slow it down by coming down to our frames option, just adding a bunch of frames until we get to a speed that we feel happier with, a little more comfortable with. So that's pretty good, but we can make it look better because if you think about fireflies, they sort of get dimmer and actually they turn off. They're not lit up all the time. So what we can do to emulate that look and also enhance the fact that they're flying on like a three-dimensional plane, so maybe they're going further away and somewhere closer. To do that, we can click on this grow shrink option. <coughs> Our path options menu. And what we can do is bring this down to like a, we could bring it down to zero actually, and then they would disappear. And it's happening kind of slowly, but what we could do is come down here where it says number of times, then we can increase that. And then it's gonna grow and shrink more times than not. I think this is looking better, but what we can do is add more of these fireflies. And then we could come down here and randomize it. So it's even more natural look. And now let's click off of this path option, go back onto this layer so we don't see that path. And let's just, let's just look at our owl with his fireflies flying around. And this is all just from one single yellow dot. All we drew is a dot. We got fireflies flying around the scene. All right, let's do one more thing just because we're having fun with the owl. I think the owl deserves it. He's cranky. Let's, uh, let's do that owl thing where they like stay still, but their eyes move around. So to do that, what I'm gonna do here so I'm gonna make a new layer. I'm gonna click on the owl. And since I already have the yellow selected, I'm just gonna color in where his pupils were. So he's got no, no more pupils. And then on the new layer, I'm gonna draw some pupils. So I'm gonna select the black. And now what we can do is draw a path 
for the eyes so that they wiggle back and forth. So this may take some trial and error trying to figure out the right spot, but what I'm gonna do is go right in between the eyes and then draw like a little bit of a loop so it like reconnects. And I think we we got it. So what we can do to make this look a little bit better is we could increase the frames again to slow it down. We can find a comfortable spot there. We can also do this ease in, ease out thing. And that might be kind of fun because it'll like go slow and then maybe the eyes move fast at one point. Just gives it a little bit more of a natural look. And they sort of steady for a second. So let's pause that. Let's zoom back out to our full scene. Let's get this out of here and let's see what this looks like all together. I think it's pretty fun and we barely did anything. We didn't even have to draw anything besides a dot. All right, so I got this little octopus alien friend here and we're gonna do a little frame by frame animation just to uh, get this guy moving. So I'm gonna click on my little animation option on the bottom right and I'm gonna go ahead and just make a new frame. I want to extend these tentacles so that we can make it look like he's swimming. So just wanna get them to go like fully straight out and then come back so it's like a movement. I don't think that's the movement, but listen, that's what, I'm just gonna draw it. On this new frame, what I'm gonna do is not go fully out. I'm just gonna take them and then just do a little bit of that movement just to sort of start the progress. So I'm taking these natural bends that are already there and just sort of stretching them out a little bit. I'm just moving them and trying to take into account the length so they get a little bit longer as they're straightened out. This is just a physics, normal physics stuff, if you will. Let me center myself in this frame over here. <laughs> okay. Uh, so this last one here, go like that. Actually, let me just go ahead and erase that line a little bit so I can bring the body to the same spot. So I want to keep the head roughly the same. And when I say roughly, I mean I'm going to keep it the same. Get the teeth in there, get the eye. And this is still a sketch, so I'm not worried about it being too tight. I'm just trying to get the movement right, and then I'll do the, I'll use this to make a tighter version. So if you look here, you'll see just that one movement pushes those out. And then I want to do one more frame where they're just like fully, fully torqued, fully extended. He's just doing a big push. At this point, I'm going to change my settings just so that I only see the previous frame. I'm going to bring the opacity down just a little bit. And here, I'm just going to go just fully, fully stretched out. So just a straight thing making them like a little bit skinnier just to really accentuate that there's a maximum stretch going on here. Like that. And then we'll come in here and then just draw this head back in. My glove is uh, making some squeaky noises on this uh, AstroPad um, screen protector. Okay. So cool, I like that movement quite a bit. I feel pretty good about that. But what I wanna do is just have it go back to that first state without having it be too jumpy. I want it to be like a fluid, flowy movement. So in order to get that, what I'm gonna do is duplicate that first frame by tapping on it, then go to duplicate, then I'm gonna drag it to the end of my sequence and then go back to the previous last frame and then hit a plus. So now I have a frame in between the two and I can see the first frame and the tentacles are all bunched up. And then I see the last one where they're fully torqued out, just full boned out push. So here, what I wanna do is just make like a middle ground just to have it not be a jarring jump back to that beginning. So I'm gonna come in here and then just sort of bend, not like that. I'm gonna come in here, 
and just sort of do a partial bend. And to be honest, you could probably reuse the one that you already did. But uh, I find that if I do it this way, it gives it a little bit more of like a flowy natural look. So that's what I'm gonna do. So we're just getting that almost fully stretched out. And that way, when it goes back to that first position, it's not gonna be a big jump from like tucked in to fully stretched out. So now that we have that in, we can just come back in here and delete that extra first one because it's gonna loop back around to that anyway. So now we can hit play. We've got a, a nice little push action, which I'm pretty happy with. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a tightened up version of this. So to do that, I'm gonna add a new frame and then I'm gonna come back to the sketch version. I'm gonna turn off the onion skins and then I'm gonna turn down the opacity of this layer and then just use that on a new layer. I'm gonna make a new layer and use this one as a sketch to make a tighter version of that. So I'm gonna come up here, I'm gonna grab um, my current favorite inking brush, which has actually been that way for a long time, which is the Retro Supply Co. Classic Inker from their liner set. If you're interested in grabbing one, I have an affiliate link below, so if you purchase anything from them, you're helping out the channel a little bit. Isn't that nice? So because this is a, a squid-ish thing, squid-ish, like a Harry Potter word, I wanna make sure that my smoothing is all the way up, and it already is. That way I can get nice smooth lines. You know what, I think I'm gonna take my glove off just for the benefit of you all not having to hear Squeaky Town, which is not the same as Funky Town. So as you can see, I'm not following exactly because that's not what I'm worried about. It's just sort of like the position, the overall like loose position, just using it as a guide. And as you can see here, I already kind of messed this up and I'm being a little particular because with frame by frame animation, it's pretty forgiving because you are only seeing it for like a split second. Now that I'm not wearing my glove, I'm accidentally activating the brush with my hand. So sorry about that. Let's get this eyeball in. Pupils. I think I'm gonna add a little detail line there and then fix these teeth up a little bit. So what I'm gonna do now is hit the plus and then I'm just gonna continue tightening these up and drawing them all in. So I will speed this up and talk to you when I finish doing the line work so you don't have to see it all in real time. Okay, so now that I got the tentacle positions in, what I'm gonna do is turn off the sketch animation and I'm gonna come back to my tightened up line work and then turn the onion skin on. This way I can redraw the head based on the tightened up version. So I'm just gonna go ahead and draw these in and I will see you in a minute. Well, you'll see me, but I'm gonna be in hyper speed, so. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete my sketch layer and I'm gonna put a new layer in to add in a background color, which I may end up changing, but this is just to, uh, as a reference, as I'm coloring this squid. So I'm gonna fill that in there and then I'm gonna come back in and fill color in my little squid man or squid she or, or squid whatever. I think uh, we'll do this like peach color Fill that in, bring my margin up because my lines are pretty tight. Fill that in. Then do some eyes. Maybe we'll do some like yellow eyes. 
because why not? And then we'll do some nice teeth. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Let's just, uh, maybe just, just a couple little details. I'm not going to go crazy. Just, uh, just a few little, you know, little, uh, tentacle things. I'm going to turn off the onion skins. So I'm not really worried about them being in the exact same spots because you're not going to really be able to tell. This is just like a little bit of just uh, a little bit of detail just to add some fun, a little extra movement. Okay. And then maybe, uh, maybe we could just do like a, a simple, simple little motion line just to add a little bit more. So, and then and just maybe some little, just some like water movement lines just to accentuate the wiggle. Yeah, I think it's okay. Listen, it's it's good enough. We're doing a demo here. So this is all fine and dandy. We've got this little thing. It looks like it's sort of moving. But what we can do now is tie in what we learned on the last one where we add a motion path. So you can take a frame by frame sequence like this and put that whole sequence, whole sequence on a motion path. So what we do here is we just click on path. And now what we can do is draw a path for this little squid friend to swim along. We can click on effects and do the same sort of situation we did with the others. We could add lots of these. We could scatter them. We can make them grow and shrink. We could have it happen a few different times so maybe it looks like they're swimming away and then swimming forward we could draw more and we could just have just a whole sea of squids just coming through doing what they're doing having a good time we can do all the different things we did before we can randomize it just to make it a little bit more natural look how much cooler that is than if we just took a normal drawing of the squid in one position and put it along a path. Now we have that swimming movement paired with the path and it, it really looks like it's swimming. And you know what? You could do even more stuff to like enhance that, that movement. Like we could come in here, make a new layer, grab that lighter blue that we were using for the, the water motion. And like, we could just draw a little a little bubble, set this bubble on a path. Go like that. Let's add some more. Let's scatter these. Put some over here. Maybe some in the middle. We, we can have a lot of bubbles. You know, there's no limit on the amount of bubbles you can have. We'll do the grow shrink too. Let's make them smaller and now let's pause this let's go back and let's view it all at the same time all kinds of squids we got bubbles flying around pretty cool right i think so okay so since it's almost halloween i thought i would do a little bit of a spooky vibe here so i got this skull flaming skull if you will and i'm gonna animate the fire so if you look at my layers here, you'll see I have a flame in the background, the skull, and then a foreground flame. So that's pretty ideal for this situation. So what I'm gonna do is just animate both of these separately. So to keep things a little less confusing, I'm just gonna turn off the front layer and work on the back layer first. So I'm gonna click on the animation timeline thing on the bottom right, just like we have for everything else. And you'll see we've got our keyframe and I'm just gonna go ahead and add a new frame here. I'm gonna turn my onion skin back on. I'm gonna bring the opacity up since we've got a black background and it's a little bit hard to see. And I'm gonna come in here, grab this pink color, grab my classic anchor because that's what I drew the rest of this in. And now I'm just gonna make 
a slightly a different version of this flame. So when you're animating flames, you just sort of want that like up and down wiggle motion. There's uh, you know, lots of different ways to do it. You can make it look a little bit more chaotic, a little less, uh, depends on what kind of flame you're going with. So I'm gonna do just a, just your average flame that you would see on a burning skull in real life. So I'm just gonna take roughly the same lines here, but just do like a shortened, more compressed version of it, I guess. And then maybe tuck this in back here. And I can't really see where the, um, the back of the flame because we've got our skull here. So I think what I'll do to make this a little easier is just turn down the opacity of the skull so that I can see my line work behind it so that I know that I close the shape when I go to fill it in. What I'm gonna do now is draw in the outline of the, of the yellow shape so that I have that there. So I'm just gonna do the same sort of movement I did with the main flame part. Maybe just pull in a little over there and just close that shape. And then I'll come over here and fill that in and then grab the yellow. I'm probably gonna have to adjust my fill margin. Oh, I didn't have to do it. Okay, so we've got that movement. You can see it's doing some wiggle stuff. I think for this next one, I think so it started a little taller and then it sucked back in. And now we're just gonna do like a big one coming off of that and see how that looks. So maybe it's splitting a little bit like this and then, you know, uh, maybe we follow that same sort of line that we were doing there. And then maybe that's breaking off a little bit. I feel like that's what fire does, just wiggles around and whatnot. So this one over here should probably get a little bit bigger too. And it can maybe curl up close to where that first one was just so we can reference that that original spot so it feels more flowy and then i'm just going to come in here and connect to that i'm not worried about this starting line back here because it's all going to be hidden by that skull and now i'm just going to again do the outline for where my yellow part of the flame will be and i'm just sort of going to like where the previous one was and extending it to sort of match the rest if that makes any sense so I'll fill that in and we can kind of scroll through this and we can see that that movement so far. So I think I'm gonna do maybe a couple more. Maybe we'll do five, five frames. So maybe on this one, we'll continue the upward trajectory and make it a little bit taller too. So maybe we'll just sort of continue this line, make it a little bit taller and just sort of I don't know, I'm sort of using the same wiggles, but just like moving them. So it's sort of like, I'm just like thinking of this movement, thinking of this movement while I'm drawing the flame. I don't know if that's helpful. Yo, you know what, let's do this and then pull this part out and split that. So it's just like looping out this way and then like starting its own little side flame, little side piece. And then we can taper this in a little bit and then maybe have that sort of go like that and split a little bit, maybe curl down. And then uh, let's bring this one up. So it was like pointing that uh, to the right now, now it's pointing to the left. I feel like flames sort of do that sort of thing. If you like look at a candle, you can also like look for a video of a flame and then just like click through and watch it frame by frame. Video is gonna have way more frames than an animation. So you'll have to keep that in mind, but you'll sort of get the look of how flames move. Okay, and then since we're getting tall there, I'm gonna just pull that yellow part up to match. And then just make sure this bottom is closed. This area at the top is like going up like this. I think it might be like curl back down. I think, I don't know, sometimes flames do that kind of thing. And I think it might give it a, a cool spirally flame motion. Then I'm going to have this one that kind of going into the other to just sort of, I don't know, flowing in and out of itself. I think I'm just saying things right now that maybe don't make any sense. And uh, I think that's because flames don't 
really make a ton of sense. I mean, maybe they do to someone. Uh, I, I don't know if any of what I'm saying right now is in any way helpful, but this is, this is my process for drawing some flames, okay? The cool thing is, sometimes when I'm drawing a flame, it like doesn't look good at all when I play it. So there's a chance that I've said all this stuff and then we come back in and I say, let's see how it looks. And it just looks like chaos. So you know what? Let's see. You know what? I think it looks, I think it looks kind of cool. I think maybe all we have to do is like that curve here got a little aggressive. So what I'm going to do is with the same brush, I'm going to double tap my modifier to use as an eraser. And I'm just going to sort of taper that a little bit. And also I think what will make this look a little bit better is to come in now that we've got the, the overall shape feeling pretty good and then just use our brush as an eraser to just sharpen the points of our little flame licks. Licks? Is that what it, is that what you would say? Licks, licks of flame. For some reason that sound sounds wrong. I, I might be just making something up. I tend to do that a lot. Just making stuff up, especially when I'm drawing and I'm like talking to you all. I feel like I just say stuff and I don't know. Listen, when you have ADHD, you get distracted easily. And I'm trying to, let's turn off the onion skin so that we can just focus on each one. So I'm just going in and tightening up these points. I feel like that'll make it look more like a flame than having like rounded bits. Okay, so let's try that. See, I think that looks pretty cool. So as you can see, I'm just sort of like trying to move the flame pieces like in and out a little bit. We can turn our skull all the way back up because we don't need to see behind it anymore. And now I'm gonna turn back on my front layer and I think I'm gonna go back to the, the flame in the back that we just animated and I'm gonna turn the opacity down so that I can see the difference between the two that I'm working on, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna go ahead here and make a new frame. I'm gonna turn onion skins back on and I'm gonna adjust the opacity of my background flame a little bit higher just so that I can tell the difference between my onion skin and that frame. So one thing that you wanna keep in mind when you're having multiple sequences of frame by frame animation is that you want either the same amount of frames or the same ratio. So I have five frames for that background flame. If I only had four here, we'd get through those four and then it would start to repeat one frame to keep up with the other having five. That may be confusing, but the point is if you had, let's say, 10 frames on this sequence and there was five on the other, that would be fine too because the five sequence would get through, start over, and then when it got to five again, it would the other one would be at 10, and then they would both start over. Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, just uh, remember to keep them either the same or in the same ratio. So for this one, I'm gonna sort of follow what's happening on the back one. And what I mean by that is, if we go back to our first frame, you'll see it's a little bit taller, and then we, shrunk it down a little bit. So I'll do the same for this one. I'll come in here, just make it a little bit shorter. And so the bottom of this one is important because it's in the front, so we're gonna see it. So I'm gonna keep it roughly in the same spot, but I don't want it to look too static because it's a, it's a flame. So moving that, moving these all down a little bit.
Yeah, I think that's a bit much over there. Let's just uh, let the back be the one that has all the uh, crazy action. So I'm just going to come in here and what I'll do instead for this one is just do like a minor curve. So it's still still playing into it. Playing into it? What does it even mean? It's still following that curve a little bit, but it's like not as dramatic. I think that looks pretty cool. And then I think one other thing that we could do is come in here and just maybe add in a few little little wiggly lines to just sort of accentuate the movement. So I'm gonna turn the onion skins back on so I can sort of see where they were. But the flame is moving so much that it's not that important to you know make sure that they don't disappear because the flame is sort of overlapping where they were to begin with. So we can just sort of play around with this sort of thing. But I think it might add a little bit of extra energy to the whole thing. We'll play that. And I think that's a, a fun little effect. Now I'm thinking what we need is some eyeballs within this skull to just make eye contact us, to just make eye contact with us while it's uh, just in flames. So I'm gonna make a new layer. I'm gonna grab the yellow and I'm just gonna come in here and draw a circle or an eyeball, and then I'll grab the black, just draw a pupil on there, so it's looking at us. Then I'm gonna make a new layer and do the other eye in its own layer, because we're gonna make these things move with a, another way that you can add motion in Fresco. We're gonna use motion paths. We're not gonna draw any paths. We're just gonna use the effects that are within the motion paths. So what we're gonna do here is just click on this grow shrink option and then we can pull that up a little bit. So these eyes are looking like they're kind of bulging out of his head. And what we can do is control how fast it's happening. Cause it's a little slow right now for it being a burning head. So what we'll do is we'll decrease the frames. So it's happening a little bit faster. And then we can also change the number of times it happens. Yeah, I think that's a little bit better. So I'll click on the other eyeball. We'll do the same thing. We'll hit path. So cool. So now we've got these eyes bugging out of his head. We got flames everywhere. I think it's looking pretty neat, but I think we can make this a little bit more fun with another way that we can add motion in Adobe Fresco. What I'd like to do here is just add a little bit more like texture flame situation within the flame itself. So I'm gonna go down to my background flame. I'm gonna make a new layer on top. And what I'm gonna do here is draw some yellow flickery like flax in here that will just sort of give it more energy and in, in motion. And then we're gonna make this animation layer a clipping mask so that it stays within the flame itself. So I'm gonna grab yellow. I'm gonna come over here to my brushes. I'm gonna get a good texture brush. I could try this grain spray from the Woodland Wonderland set from Retro Splico. This brush set has so many textures that I use all the time if you've seen other videos. Again, link below, affiliate link, support the channel. Or don't, you could just Google it and then buy it and not support the channel. Not very nice, but you could do that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is just make five different frames of this, but just sort of like willy nilly draw them in. Maybe adjust the brush size a little bit, not too dramatically. 
but I'm just sort of putting these in and like not worrying about where they go because again, it's gonna be clipped to that flame. So if it goes beyond, that's fine. And we'll go a little bit bigger on this one. Okay, and now we come over to our animation layer and we just click on this uh, clipping mask option over to the right with a little arrow pointing down. And you'll see that this yellow is now confined to just the shape of our flame. So if we play this, you'll see we've got that extra yellow grit that's just kind of flowing up and flickering around all within that clipping mask. So we can go ahead and do the same thing to our front flame. So make a new layer. And then I'm just gonna tap in some of these. Make the brush smaller so there's some variety. Do a new frame here. Like that, new frame. Adjust the brush size a little bit. And then one last one. And again, just make that a clipping mask. And now that is locked in to the flame itself. Let's try one more thing. So what we can do is take the two eyeball layers. And now that we've got the motion pass all set, I'm gonna put those in a group together. And now I'm gonna make a layer on top of that. And I'm gonna grab the pink here and get a smaller brush texture. And what I wanna do here is just add some of that over the eyes so that it is sort of like a reflection of the flames. I'm actually gonna turn off the onion skin so I can just see it a little bit better. Just the brush size a little bit here. So now if we make this a clipping mask, it's gonna clip it to that entire group, which is pretty cool. So we hit play and you'll see we've got that sort of little bit of a reflection in the eyes and I think that is a nice little touch. Now that you know how easy it is to add motion to your illustration work in Adobe Fresco, hopefully you'll make some cool stuff. If you do and you post it on Instagram or other social media, make sure that you tag me because I would love to check it out. While you're here, check out this other playlist that just has tons and tons of Adobe Fresco tutorials and tricks and tips to keep you going. All right, good talk.